in ever decreasing subscriber count videos, I have learned from Frodo's photo and um, the passion of light for photography and Amar's channel that I may as well just throw these away. They're no good anymore. The DSLR is dead. Who would have thought it? All this time, I was thinking that this D810 took phenomenal photos. I couldn't believe it because it has a mirror and that mirror moves up and down out of the way that this camera is obsolete and it doesn't even warrant use. They're so obsolete that Jared took and sold his D5, which is a flagship Nikon camera, so he could recover some of his money before he lost all of his money. I wanted to make this video to explain why I dumped my last DSLR in favor of going 100% mirrorless. Now that's satire. I hope y'all get that. He did sell his camera, but these cameras are in no way headed out. Come on guys, don't fall for that. Let's be realistic here. The D810 is one of the most prolific cameras Nikon ever made. It, like the D750 and the D850 now, and this D200 takes really good photos. They're only 10 megapixel or so, but it's still, a, it's a great little camera. Unfortunately, apparently I need to throw them away and just go buy a whole bunch of Z6 and Z7s. That's from what I can see. Not just a year or two ago, Jared was talking about how mirrorless cameras were the bane of his existence. <laughs> Basically paraphrasing. And Amar had a really good video the other day where he was doing the hand motions and he was talking about it. And All right, you two. You guys like my like, little dolly action here? Pretty good. All right. So what are we talking about today? Amar knows mirrorless.com. Mirrorless on the up and up. Yeah, you got to do this. Up and up, baby. And I thought, yeah, you know, Jared, them are now the Georgia photographer. The Georgia photographer don't know squat. <laughs> actually, my plan is to use this D810 this weekend. I'm actually going to use it at an event that we're going to, and I'm going to shoot photos outdoors with it. This is an incredible outdoor machine. I'm actually going to drag along the whole kit this time. I'm going to take an a SB700 and a radio trigger so I can set up a remote flash to kick some light up because there's a lot of like corners and nooks and crannies. I'm going to a rock climbing thing. This camera does excellent, excellent photography. And for people to say that this camera is now obsolete, there's people making good living with these things. I mean, a good living. Oh, I have to remember how to turn on live view. I haven't done it in so long. I have to admit, I've been a mirrorless junkie for about the last year. I have used this camera very little. That's one of the reasons I'm getting it out. Another reason is I'm, I've got a lens I'm gonna review and I wanna review it on full frame. And this is the only full frame digital camera that I have. It just, it's just kind of disheartening. Honestly, I do see the future. There is legitimacy to it. Unfortunately, he's right. This technology is obsolete. There's a lot of extra moving parts in here that they got away from when they made the X-T3. It doesn't have a bunch of the mechanism that this camera has. There's a lot of complexity in here that's not necessary to take good photography. You know, the pinna prism is a complex component. It's not a simple thing to make. Then the mirror box, that whole assembly, it's not needed to take good photos. Does that mean these cameras are not worth fooling with? No. There will be pros using DSLRs for decades to come. I, I promise you. I, I have seen the equipment that people that earn money with photography use, and it's not the most hot rod gear that any manufacturer makes most of the time. I mean, seriously, it wouldn't surprise me if people were using these D200s and making good money with them. There's places where that D200 would do just fine. I was watching a video today, or listening to it actually, kind of like a podcast style thing in the truck while I was driving over to my mom's house. The person in the video was talking about Micro Four Thirds and what would basically be the next genuine evolution in cameras. And I really got to thinking about that. The evolution we're kind of living through right now is the transition from 
DSLRs, single lens reflex designs into mirrorless. And there's a couple of different designs that are there and that's fine. That's the, that's the normal progression of things is to make it simpler and more efficient, you know, improve battery technology. The list goes on and on. Point being is, you know, linear focus motors over the screw drive is more efficient. It's a better focusing system. It's faster. It's, it's you know, has more accuracy. There's a lot of things that are improvement. The next big improvement I think we'll see will be, honestly, will be the lack of a shutter at all. I think when they get to the global, what they call a global shutter or a global capture of data from the sensor, when they basically get to some kind of buffer directly off the sensor instead of scanning you know read this pixel then this pixel then this pixel then, and then go to the next row and then in the next row and then the next row and that's what they're doing now and they're they're scanning it really fast but it's still scanning that's how you get that's how you get those weird warpages when you see them with electronic shutter operations a lot of times because the object's moving during the scan and it moves through the frame in such a way that it'll bend stuff and you get those bizarre effects. Once you move away to a global capture and you literally say, okay, give me the data. And it, it says, this is the information at this timestamp. And it pulls all that data in straight into the buffer and says, this is your image. That'll be the next breakthrough. When they make that affordable, these will be obsolete. People will still use them though. See, that's the difference is you don't have to give up using these machines just because they're old, just because they're not the most current evolution in a device. It still works just fine. Don't fall for the hype. I would like to have a global shutter camera that's you know got a 50 megapixel sensor in it or whatever. It would it would be phenomenal. You would probably be limited by the resolving power of your glass at that point. I mean seriously, it would be insanity how sharp the images would be and how good your video from frame to frame would be because you, it would basically be like shooting on celluloid film, just electronically. And they're moving to that. They're getting there. It's just not here yet. I thought I'd have a little fun with it. You know, the Georgia photographer, don't know squat. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to have a little fun with you guys. On your Saturday night, you can have, you can get a good laugh and you can throw away your DSLR because it's obsolete now. So with that, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And what's your thoughts on the next actual breakthrough in camera, in camera or photography or camera technology or whatever, you know, what's your, what do you think will be the next major breakthrough? With that, this is David, the Georgia photographer. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you like my videos and you wanna see more of them, you know, and the bells over there for, for the notification and all that jazz. So until next time, get your camera out, no matter how old it is, and go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see y'all later, bye-bye. Hey, watch this. That's continuous high speed on a D810. Did you hear how fast it was? <laughs> it recorded all them frames I just took of the ceiling. <laughs> but that was continuous high, yeah. But here's the beauty of this camera. Quiet continuous. That's actually not bad for a, for a single lens reflex camera, for it to actually operate a mirror system. That's a pretty quiet shutter. These cameras have always been known for their quiet shutters. Anyway, see y'all later. Bye-bye.